Welcome to Channel 18 News. I'm Jim Rogers. Following a month-long investigation, Hopkins County Sheriff's Investigator Dennis Finley and deputies have arrested three individuals for burglary of a building in Miller Grove, theft at La Pooch Pet Resort, burglary of a habitation, and thefts in Raines County and in Bowie County. A warrant for the arrest of Ashley Swilling, age 29, of Cumbie, Nathan Allen Martin, age 30, of Conway, Arkansas, and Robert Stevens, age 39, led deputies to observe a green 2017 Jeep Renegade pulling into Subway in Silver Springs. Investigator Wade Sheets was called to the scene and arrested Swilling and Martin. Criminal investigator Finley said the investigation began when the burglary in the Miller Grove area was reported. A number of footprints were found at the scene and other evidence was gathered. It was found that three people were involved. The three had conspired in that burglary, and two, Martin and Stevens, had been involved in other burglaries in the Miller Grove area. Property taken in the robbery at La Pooch, valued at over $600, has been recovered. Most of the $1,500 in the burglary of a building at Miller Grove has been recovered as well. Finley said some of of the uh, items are still at a pawn shop. Some of the property was discarded in a pool. In the next two months, the Department of Public Safety dive team will be called out to recover the property at the bottom of the pool. Thefts in Raines County area included chainsaws. Finley says some of the chainsaws have been recovered and others have been found in a pawn shop in the Rockwall area. Wednesday morning, thefts of two four-wheelers in Bowie County was also uncovered. He said the location of the four-wheelers has been confirmed and they will be recovered later today. Stevens was also involved in taking an iPad from Miller Grove School. All three are in Hopkins County Jail. All three charged with engaged in organized criminal activity. Swilling and Martin are held on a $50,000 bond each. Stevens has not had bond set. Interest in being able to Interested in being able to spot storms as they move into your area? A Skywarn class taught by the National Weather Service Thursday night from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. at Silver Springs City Hall is open to the public. A small number of area citizens interested participated in the event last year. However, following recent storms, interest may be stronger this year. The training will include determining wind speed, recognizing various cloud formations, and the strength of the storm based on the formation. Also, understanding tornadoes by recognizing storm clouds that are potential for a possible tornado, and if the tornado is moving toward your location, will also be included. A basic storm watcher certificate is made available to those who attend. Paris Junior College continues to be below the state average on tuition and fees. The Paris Junior College Board of Regents were informed of this at their meeting this week. In comparison with the state average of community colleges, Paris Junior College is lower on in-district, out-of-district, and non-resident tuition and fees. They also heard a report on a very positive audit and a clean audit for federal and state funding as well. Enjoyed a visit from Laura Colby of The Magic Scoop. The Magic Scoop is one of the merchants that is found on the app, Simply Sulphur Springs under Where to Eat. Now it is at 210 Conley Street and The Magic Scoop is a general store, ice cream shop, and cafe. They're open seven days a week and this Friday night they're doing a neon game night. So you're invited to the Magic Scoop and all the fun things that they have planned for you downtown. Like we have an event Friday night. That's right. That shows up as events. So it's our um, neon game night. Okay. And uh, so you can go out and look and see that that's from 7 until 1030. It's open to anyone that wants to come in and um, have some fun playing good old games. We're going to have our karaoke system up and going. Um, we'll have ring toss. We'll have twister. We'll have um, just fun different tic-tac-toe, all of which are going to glow in the dark. Um, so it should be it should be a good time. And then we'll have our ice cream and sodas and 
things like that. All kinds of good things. Enjoy. All kinds of fun. Uh, uh, anybody, lo- who doesn't love ice cream? I'm looking at a picture that's on the app under the Magic Scoop, and it's called the Run Over Unicorn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's an ice cream dish. What is this? Yes, that is one of our brownie sundaes. Um, and we just like coming up with quirky little, you know, kind of magical, you know, unicorns are considered magical. So, you know. We, we try to keep with a, a fun theme. Okay. But it's a brownie sundae with um, the ice cream on top, hot fudge, toppings of your choice, and then a broken um, homemade waffle cone on uh, the top. The pointy brown looking. So, okay, yes, there's so the, the horns point, of the unicorn. So the point is the horn of the unicorn. Yeah. And here's a picture also of freshly baked cookies coming out of your cookie oven. Yes. You do that. So many yes. things at the Magic Scoop. Yes. And we're going to talk about the meals, too. But first, let's let's go into this Friday night event. This is your first Friday night event? Yes, it is. And um, some of the some of my employees, you know, everyone that works for me just loves coming into work. And they all want to help contribute to making the place a fun place. Mm-hmm. And because it's relatively new, a lot of people don't know about it. So we're still having people come in. And so we wanted, they wanted to come up with a fun way to maybe draw more people in to see just how fun the place is. Um, it's a great place for birthday parties. We've had several birthday parties recently. Um, so they wanted to come up with just a fun game night where any age can come in and just play fun games. And we don't have televisions in our place. We only play music. So um, we, try to, we try to keep it in the theme of interacting with humans. Right. When you say you have music, that's your only electronic contribution to the evening. Yes. Because, of course, music is, is recorded, so you're going to be playing that. Yes. But what the games that you play are not electronic games. No, they are not electronic games. And we always have games available no matter what time of day you come in. We have Rock'em Sock'em Robots. We have Kerplunket. We have Battleship. We have Checkers. We have cards that anyone can go and pick up a game, take it to the table, play it with their family and friends. Um, and then what's really wonderful is people love doing that, and then they go and they put it back. <laughs> and it's ready for the next person to come along and, and use. I love your concept, and we've talked about this a lot since you got up here this morning. This human interaction, one person talking more, playing games with another, you might actually touch each other. You yes. might, you know, there might be contact in games like you'll be playing on Friday night that is friendly and fun and it has nothing to do with staring into a screen. No. No electronics. You communicate with words (laughs) (laughs) that you speak. And you laugh. Verbally. And you laugh. And that's what's so fun is we have we have you know parents bringing their little kids in. We have some that make it a regular you know um thing that they do together a mother and a daughter you know will come in the same day every week and it's just fun seeing those um, interactions occur and how they look forward to it well i love the concept and we're going to keep reminding people that such a place such a magical place does exist in downtown sulfur springs yes and it has magical ice cream that we make in house, you make your ice cream. Yes, my husband makes all of it, and um, we like to say it's the best ice cream in the world um, because it's we 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 put our love and passion into making sure it's quality ice cream, something that most people in Texas don't experience um, because there's not a lot of hard ice cream homemade hard ice cream places Hmm. um, especially in the Dallas Fort Worth area how interesting and it's right here in Sulphur Springs very accessible from the sidewalk just across from City National Bank on Connolly Street just steps from the downtown square so remember the magic scoop and remember on Friday night now if you've got 
if you would like to come and watch the goings-ons, if you've got youngsters that you'd like to bring, uh, it's wide open. And then after the neon game night this Friday night, you're going to start doing special events. Yes, we're going to start making that a regular where we do at least one to two events every month. Okay. Um, and we kind of want to gear them around the, you know, holidays that okay. might come up um, and things of You've that nature. You've got a Valentine so. event that's in the planning stages. Yes. yes. I was talking to Harley. She's a Starbucks barista in her yes. former uh, employment before she came to Magic Scoop and she brings a lot to the job and Bree, she's a high school age employee and Tammy, I, I met her, she's a grown up lady and she works evenings yes, yes and we are, we've got a great crew um, you know, I take pride in, in having happy people you know serve our Happy customers. <laughs> I love your t-shirts there. Yes, ice cream is groovy. It is. It's it's psychedelic. <laughs> yes, it's psychedelic. <laughs> yes, we love our tie-dye shirts. We get lots of compliments. Um, so there's no there's no questioning who the employees are in the shop because we always have the bright tie-dye shirts on. Well, I want to talk about the uh, meals that you serve, the food and the selection of foods. Yes, so we started our cafe um, in the middle of October, and we focus um, on breakfast and lunch, and you can get either anytime, so starting from 7.30 in the morning. If you want lunch, then you can have lunch. If you want breakfast, you can have breakfast. Um, up until 3 o'clock is when our grill is open. Every once in a while, if, if we've got staff on hand that um, is working the night shift, that's comfortable with working the grill, we'll extend the grill. Okay. Um, we just, we're very casual and just kind of go by the needs of the people. You have sandwiches. Yes. You have soups. Yesterday, I think the tomato basil was on the menu. Yes. It's yes. very popular. Yes, it is. We make we we do everything from scratch. Our soups, um, especially, are from scratch. So we've got our tomato basil. We also had a chicken and rice, and then a creamy chicken and rice. Um, I think soup. one day I had a minestrone there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. These so. cooler afternoons. That sure is good. Grilled cheese of all yes, kinds. Yes, our gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches is what we like to call them. So our number one seller is our. Uh, Number one, which is turkey, basil, pesto, tomato, avocado, pepper jack cheese on a sourdough bread, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a it's a great combination that you necessarily wouldn't think about, but boy, once it hits your palate, you're like, wow. Mm -hmm. I believe that I did have that one day. And you, then we have our gluten-free bread, which is what you right. had it on. This is a big holdup for people who want to eat a sandwich, but they're gluten-free. Where do you get gluten-free bread for your sandwich? And the Magic Scoop says, I'll do it, and, and you are offering that. Yes, and it's a, it's a very unique gluten-free bread, and then it actually tastes like and the texture of it is bread. It tastes and behaves like bread yes. on your sandwich. Yes. <laughs> Which is a big plus yes. <laughs> when you're gluten-free. Yes. And your the, your breakfast now, you use real eggs from real chickens. Farm fresh eggs that come straight from a farm um, out of Cooper. Hmm. So omelets are a special. Omelets. We love making omelets. And the other thing we love to do is out of we, on our menu, all of our ingredients pretty much that we have available are listed. So you can build your own sandwich omelet. Um, if you want to make, I have one customer who made one of our sandwiches into an omelet. And then I had another customer say, I don't know if I want a sandwich or an omelet. So we made an omelet sandwich. Okay. And so we love just creating, you know, kind of our theme. The whole, the thing I love about our name, the magic scoop is you can create magic just from the things that are in the store, whether it be the ice cream, um, the cookies, the brownies, the cobblers, the sandwiches, the eggs, you know, we just, we love creating and making it just a unique experience. 
the um, app now that you are seen on your advertising on that is the Simply Sulphur Springs app. Let's just, you know, talk about that just a little bit. You are one of our merchants that are advertising here. It has uh, kind of a combination of Sulphur Springs, Hopkins County, and Sulphur Springs ISD and KSST as partnerships in these entities in our area. So Magic Scoop is there with pictures of the things that you offer. And there are other merchants, too, other eateries that are advertising there. There are places, hotels. There are stores to shop in. It is just called Simply Sulphur Springs. And I, yes. I love the simple concept of the name of that app. It's for both Android and um, smartphones. And you can just Google search for Simply Sulphur Springs, or you can search in your app store or Google Play, and the app is free. Yes. So it's for residents of Sulphur Springs, Hopkins County, and visitors anywhere planning to come to our town. Here's other things you can do on the app. Pay your water bill, report a pothole, report a found pet. There's an event section that's the go-to place to see all events in Hopkins County, whether it be a concert or a, a crab boil or whatever kind of thing is planned in our area. And if you have an event coming up, you can submit that through the app and you'll find that form in the KSST section of the Simply Sulphur Springs app, KSST 1230 AM. And when there's severe weather or breaking news or school closings, things like that, you'll receive um, texts yeah, uh, notifications. Yeah. And landmarks are also listed on the app. And KSST news and streaming available through the app. And places like the Magic Scoop General Store Ice Cream and Cafe yes. advertising there with pictures. Yes. Yes. The, um, we have like one minute. And I want to make sure that people know that y you're from here. Your family lives here. Yes. My, my stepdad um, was actually born here. Um, he was born on, the house is no longer there. It was on Jefferson Street, just right behind um, one of the big historical houses. And he, we know him as Dan the Man. Dan the Man. <laughs> Dan the Man, yes. And so you returned to Silver Springs, you and your husband, Adam. Actually, you live in the Cumby area. Yes. And bought this uh, building, and it's kind of evolved yes, now into the Magic Scoop. Yes, it has evolved. Um, it's really, it's been a, a lot of fun watching the way God's worked in our lives and and helped us get from where we started to where we are now. Um, are you open there seven days a week? We are. Okay, good. We are always there. We'll talk more about the Magic Scoop in our very first Next Convenience. But don't forget this Friday night, it's Neon Game Night. Yes. Just come in and it'll be so much fun. Yes, it will be Lots of fun. Thank you for coming in and sharing with us this morning, Laura. Sure. Thank you for having me. Here's Don Julian with sports. The number seven ranked Wildcats basketball team stayed unbeaten in district play with a 62-41 to victory over Pine Tree on the road Tuesday night. Victory Walker led the Wildcats with 15 points and Keiston Willis had 13. The Wildcats are 7-0 and in district play and 24-3 and for the season. I talked with Wildcats coach Clark Cipolletta about the Pine Tree win and their home game coming up Friday against Marshall. Um, I was really proud of the guys. I thought, um, you know, in the first quarter, um, we played really well despite the score was pretty low. I think we had like a one-point lead. and We just missed a lot of easy opportunities, but we did a really good job of getting the ball inside and, and getting it uh, to the spots on the floor that, that we can score at. And, uh, and then in the second and third quarter, we really opened it up. I think we allowed 12 points, and we scored almost 40 um, during that little stretch. So um, defensively, I thought it was one of our best games. And, uh, and through stretches of the game, we played really well offensively. So I was, like I said, proud of them. They kind of came at you in the fourth quarter. They mm -hmm. had 21 points, but we had 18, so they didn't make up a whole lot of ground. Right, and uh, a lot of that is, um, you know, we uh, changed some lineups and uh, got a lot of guys in that, um, gave them some opportunities to get some minutes and uh, have them playing. But yes, they uh, they hit some shots in the fourth quarter. We didn't contest as as well as I wanted to, but they did a good job scoring, and uh, but so did we. So uh, you know, we kind of kept that 
that lead and cushion, um, you know, where it needed to be. They really don't have a, an answer for Victor. They don't have anybody as big to match up with him. So he he had a good game inside. He did, and 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 they. I think they're probably the biggest team besides maybe Mount Pleasant. I think they do have bigs. Okay. Um, I think we just did a really. T I think in the Pine Tree game we did a, the best job we've done all year, really getting him deep post touches, and he did a good job of turning and scoring and not trying to do too much with the ball, but really keeping it simple and uh, which creates a lot of efficiency uh, on the offensive end. All right, and they they are a scrappy team, and you knew mm -hmm. even with a big lead after three quarters that. I mean, the, the way they shoot the three, they had ten threes, uh, you know, in our gym. Mm -hmm. and that kind of worried me, you know, in their own gym to get hot and that kind of stuff. Yes, and, and that's something we talked about in the scouting report, just making them miss. Always uh, making them shoot over a contested hand, and if we can keep doing that consistently, you know, that limits them uh, from making as many threes and being as efficient as, as they were here. And um, I think over overall, all night, we did, we did a good job of that. Now Marshall coming up Friday mm -hmm. back in Wildcats gym. I know you'll be glad to be back on the home court. And, and uh, Marshall, you know, they've, they've had a tradition uh, right. the past few years of being a really good team. Yes, um, the first time we played, it was kind of a weird game. They, they really try to slow down the pace and hold the ball. I don't anticipate they're going to do that uh, this game, which they could. But um, they beat Texas High last night, scored 86 wow. to 70. Um, mm -hmm. Beat them by 16 points. And, and they've been scoring a lot of points here lately. So. Um, I think uh, Carson's done a good job of getting it back rolling. Uh, they just took the third place, um, you know, solely to themselves. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a game we have to really come and, and stay focused because of the tradition and because, you know, they can score in uh, bunches. So um, we're looking forward to it. Not only are we getting teams the best every game, but now they're inspired by a big win coming in. Mm -hmm. So that makes it uh, that much easier. That was, and, and Pine Tree was the same way. Pine Tree yeah. ended up beating Texas High. So, uh, you know, I think we have an experienced group who who's going to come in, focus, and uh, I think if we can do that, we can take care of business. The number nine ranked Lady Cats basketball team used a strong start in a solid second half to defeat Pine Tree at home 59-28 Tuesday night. Sedavia Porter and Kaylee Jefferson both scored 20 points. The Lady Cats remain unbeaten in district play with a 9-0 record and they are 23-3 for the season. I talked with Lady Cats coach Jeff Chapman. I was looking for something to give us determination of um, um, we improved against them and we we stayed about the same the score is almost identical mm -hmm. uh, they their two best players um, play better than um, they they play better here than they did at their place and they have the big two and so I was just trying to see what kind of improvement uh, I just want to get, get a barometer to see where we are because I don't want to go down in how we play um, at the end of the year, especially the second time around playing everybody. I'm tr we're trying to do different things to keep the kids motivated mm -hmm. and to stimulate um, interest in what we're doing. We don't want them to think, oh, it's blase. Uh, well, here we go. We got to play these guys. They're, you know, they're not, uh, you know, very good this year or they're struggling a little bit. But well, the goal is to play. Um, consistent every night yeah. and show up every night and be ready to play every night because that's how you get into that law and the the better teams I've coached uh, gotten better at the end of the year and that's still our goal yeah. is to um, improve and take that step up and sometimes it just takes another team their, their approach uh, we had one quarter four quarter third quarter Second quarter. Second quarter. Yeah, we only had there's a four in there somewhere. <laughs> we only had four, so that was uh, that was you know that was that was I ain't gonna say disappointing, but it was just something that I, I didn't want. I wanted us to you know finish the quarter strong, but we had to sit a couple of players with foul trouble. But then the first five minutes of the third quarter is something we've been working on, and that was good. And then all in all, I think you know we showed up and and did what we we're supposed to. I told them. The teams that we're supposed to win, I think that you should. Not to sound you know, conceited or big-headed, but it's, that's the truth. And if it's somebody like uh, T.I. was a close game, then we need to be consistent on them and uh, improve. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. uh, on them and uh, go from there. So uh, I'm sure Marshall's, you know, with a new coach in, he's got some more things in place. We just have to go down there and play and uh, be ready for them, you know, just they're just not going to, you know, let us just run over them. They, they're going to show some improvement. So uh, I look at the film and see what they're doing or what they were doing last time and uh, kind of go from there. That's what I look at, seeing what, how they're trying to attack what we're doing and see if we can continue to take away what they want to do and how they're trying to advance the ball to the floor and how they're trying to score in the half court. If we can control that, then it'll be a, a similar game. But if we're letting them in the paint, because in high school basketball right now, unless you're just a superior, outstanding team, um, you're you're going to try to take away, uh, keep, keep keep the other team out of the paint, make them shoot outside with a hand and face. Don't let them catch at the high post. Don't let them catch at the low post, and you know guard the three. Mm-hmm. And those are the things how I look at it that I want to try to take away, and um, just make it difficult them di- difficulty on them scoring, and then we have to have a game where we need turnovers. And we can't execute in the half court, but it's it's a slower game. And for girls basketball, if you want a faster game, you got to try to create those turnovers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you have to be ready for the end of the year, too. If you're fortunate enough to advance in the playoffs, it's going to be a slow down grind game against somebody yeah. because the better teams are there. Mm-hmm. And they're going to make you execute in the half court. Well, you said they had the big two. Uh, they can't match the big three. And uh, you had 20 from Sedavia and 20 from Kaylee and uh, 11 from Autumn. So uh, they, all, they all chipped in well. And uh, Sedavia seems to be playing better than – she seems to be hitting 20 in every game now. Yeah. Um, the first part of what you said is true. Um, we're fortunate enough to have our inside game as opposed to them. They didn't. And outside game. It's tough to win or be successful with just perimeter play yeah. because the other team will zone you up or whatever or get out there with a hand to face. You don't get open looks a lot. So uh, we're fortunate enough to have uh, that outside inside game uh, from our guards uh, sometime and then our post game. So, um, yeah, we have a little bit more than they do. And uh, they stay back in a 2-3 and they just want to contain you. They're not trying to cause a turnover. And there's different styles of play with each coach. Mm-hmm. And what you said about Sedavia is true. Um, she, you know, she comes up with uh, that those amazing scores sometimes, driving, and and she has that jet to get away from the pack, and they can't catch her. Yeah. And then um, I think she had two threes, maybe or one yeah. three. Yeah, two threes. Had five in the game and shot. 31% three-point rate. Mm-hmm. I had the stats, and I was looking at them this morning. So she's improving in that, and uh, she stays after, and we talk about improving, and I constantly stay in their ear about improving, mm-hmm. and um, not just the big three. We need, uh, I think, one of the last two games, somebody was close in the stats along with those three. It might have been Imani. It might have been Danielle. But – we're going to need that. The other yeah. teams that we're playing later on, they're going to see who they're trying to stop because they already tried to. Um, so Davies has benefit a lot of people trying to guard Kaylee, and then they're trying to guard Autumn inside as well. Packed it in. Yeah, they? yeah. And then, then those guards. That's why all them guards had them chances to shoot those threes because we shot more threes last night than we have in a while. But it's my fault. I put it in the goal sheet. That's what you want to do. <laughs> but we can't stop going in. Uh we got to uh, understand, too, uh, and I got to get them, t- let it touch the post hands and let them fan it back out to you. Mm-hmm. Then you can get a three. Then it's easier three. And that's something uh, that I have to present and practice and try to drill in. And uh, that'll, that'll, that'll kind of get that better. But they they going to concentrate on those other kids. And some of those other kids got to hit some shots. But still, if we've been proving time and time again, if the big three play well, then the other kids join them. Mm-hmm. We have a, a pretty good success like that. All right. Thank you. 
The Wildcats soccer team played their first regular season game at the new Gerald Prim Stadium Tuesday night, and they defeated Pittsburgh 2 to nothing. I talked about that win and what comes next with Wildcats soccer coach Nicky Wiggins. We won 2-0, to zero. Yeah, good opener for the Prim for the, for the soccer program. But tell us about the game uh, and your goal scores. Yes, sir. Uh, Angel Tavera um, got a PK in the first half. Um, Omar Hernandez came around the left side. He came out of the, of the back and uh, dribbled in, and they tried to slide tackle him. And actually, he, he stayed up, and they, they let the play uh, go, but he, he lost the ball, so they gave us a PK, and Angel stepped up and, and buried the PK. And then uh, it was 1-0 to at halftime, and then uh, Julio Robles ended up scoring in the second half to, to make it 2-0. to zero. Pretty good defensive effort, huh? Yeah, very good. Um, a few times we kind of got organized again, some stuff that you know we've been talking about uh, about the tournament, but but overall, you know, a lot better. Um, Pittsburgh was was pretty good um, as far as you know. I'm glad we beat them two to zero. Missed missed a lot of opportunities that you know we're going to need to to score some without having that many chances uh, in the district play. All right, February second, first district game. That's next for you. So a lot of time to work on a lot of things. Yes, sir. A lot of time to work on and get ready for Pine Tree. Uh, they're they're pretty good. You know, from last year, I think they're number five in the region right now. So mm-hmm. they're playing really good soccer. And uh, like you said, we just have some a lot of stuff to work on and try to get ready for that first district opener at the Prim. Give me a little quip. Last night you said uh, you may work a week on finishing. <laughs> yeah, we really might. You know, uh, we, we've had some finishers here in the past, and and like I told you before the season, you know, we're, we're I was expecting you know multiple go- goal scorers because we don't have that one guy. You know, so yeah, we'll just see who can put the ball in the back of the net, and that's, that's how you get more playing time. I bet Fernando could help him with that. He could, he could put it in the net. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Him, Tony, and. Yeah, we've had a we've had a, a good run of them. So somebody's going to step up. I know Julio and Angel have been scoring the last few games, which is good. You know, consistent goal scorers. And but the positions they play, they have they had the second chance. We got to start. <clears throat> excuse me. We got to start bearing the first first chance. You know, a little more often. So, but that's something we're going to work on, and, and we'll iron out before district. The flu bug caused cancellation of the Lady Cats soccer team's game at Lindale on Tuesday evening. Lady Cats coach Joel Bailey and several of his players caught the flu. The Lady Cats JV did travel to Lindale and they played a game. The Lady Cats are 7-2-3 for the season. They'll play Chapel Hill in a non-district match at Gerald Prim Stadium Tuesday night. The Miller Grove Hornets basketball team remained unbeaten in district play with a come-from-behind win against Fannindale 68-62 68-62 Tuesday night. Fannindale had a big 21-9 lead after one quarter, and they led 32-29 at halftime. But the Hornets outscored Fannindale 39-30 in the second half to get the win. The Hornets were led by Trayton Andre, who had 28 points. Luke Brignan scored 17. Kobe Robertson had 10 points. Angelo Alcock scored 9. And Grant Sharp and Grant Earp both scored two points. Hornets coach Gary Billingsley said the Hornets were very sluggish on the offensive end and that resulted in some easy baskets for Fannindale. Coach Billingsley gave Fannindale credit for playing with a lot of intensity. He said he was also proud of his team for battling and getting another road win. The Hornets are 4-0 in district play, and they're 18-13 for the season. The Hornets also won on the road Friday at Sulphur Bluff, 54-38. Luke Brignan had 17 points, Albert Serrano had 14, Trayton Andre 11, Angelo Alcox 9, and Jack McCoy 3. The Hornets will host Roxton for a homecoming game next Tuesday. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.